And earlier I spoke to Israel's opposition leader, Yair Lapid, and I started off by asking whether he's fully behind the government's military operations so far. I think the entire country is united behind the government and the army as our troops are, you know, trying to save lives and change a reality that has been too cruel to digest after the horrible Saturday of October the 7th in which our children were massacred and, you know, people were beheaded and, and burned alive. I think the world understands that we need to change things fundamentally, and this is what we're doing. So, yes, we are united behind, the, behind our troops. The very nature of your title um, is to hold the government to account. So what, if any, issues do you have or have you had with Benjamin Netanyahu's approach so far? Well, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, the way civil society is being handled during your wartime. We are, of course, discussing with them um, the way the, the, they're dealing with the question of hostages. We have more than 200 hostages uh, in, held by Hamas. So we have terrorists holding up, uh, you know, children and talking to the families on on daily basis. This is, of course, devastating and heartbreaking. So we're discussing this, those issues, but we're doing it in a wartime manner, I assume, would be the way to describe it. So, so you're not, you, you don't take any issue with, with any decision that he has made so far? Uh, just in the, in the name no, of unity, you're going along with it? No, no, you're taking it to the extent now. We, we are discussing it, but we are discussing it uh, as, as differences of opinion on how to deal with a common cause. The entire country now has a common cause. We have to eliminate Hamas from our borders because a terrible and a horrible terror organization has killed our children, and nobody is going to live like this anymore. So, uh, you know, we have, when, when you have a common goal, it changes the discourse. The second stage of the war is now underway. How many stages would you expect that there would be? Well, I, I don't know if I will define it as stages. We have a goal, and the goal is to stop Hamas ruling in Gaza. Because as long, as long as Hamas is in Gaza, then the Israelis and the Palestinians are going to be its victims. Yeah. This is a terror organization. They're not interested in the two-state solution. They don't want to build a Palestinian state. They want a caliphate that will go all the way from Iraq to Egypt. And uh, they want to kill Jews because they're Jews and Christians because they're Christians and moderate Muslims because they're moderate. So uh, we were trying to live with this next to our homes and sheltered, but we cannot live like this anymore. Right. So the end of this war is when Hamas is eliminated from Gaza and from our borders. I mean, is this months? Is this, is this a, years could this take? I don't know if years, but it can take months. Yes, yes, okay. it's going to be long. Can you even eliminate Hamas? Because it subscribes to an ideology, and an ideology will always be there, will it not? Well, the ideology might be there, but as it happened before with ISIS, everybody said, well, there's no way to eliminate ISIS. Yes, there was. You have to be thorough, you have to be sometimes brutal, and you have to be smart about how you're doing this. Hamas is not such a big organization. I mean, all in all, it's about 30,000 people. Um, not all of them will wants, wants, to be, wants to sacrifice themselves. The UN Secretary General has renewed calls for a ceasefire. Realistically, when would the IDF even consider that? When we will win this war. I mean, it's, it's, we are trying our best to help uh, humanitarian issues within Gaza while we're fighting. But it's a battle zone, and battle zones are never static. And when you said that the, the, the war could last for months, though, is that also to say that there might not be a ceasefire for months because you won't have a ceasefire until the war is finished? There is a possibility there won't be a ceasefire for months. What we are trying to do is we are trying to push the people of Gaza, who are not part of Hamas, to the southern part of Gaza, which, in which there is no uh, battles. We, the problem we have with it, we, we've done something no army in the history of wars has done. We have announced everybody, where is it that we're going to go uh, and, uh, and when are we going to go there? Because we wanted to make sure that the uh, population of Gaza, the people of Gaza has an opportunity to flood the area. 
uh, Hamas is shooting at them while they're doing this because they, they want to use them as human shields. So it's going to be complicated. They might it might take months before the first humanitarian post. The Turkish president has said on the weekend that Israel has been committing war crimes for 22 days now. Your diplomats were pulled as a response to that. What are your thoughts on the language that was used by Erdogan? Well, I think you should ask any Kurd on earth what does he think about Erdogan's ability to lecture us about uh, uh, humanity or civility. Uh, he's, 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 uh, I mean, I don't want to get us into another fist fight with Erdogan, but basically he's not exactly a role model of humanitarian issues. Are you concerned or do you have any questions about our Prime Minister here in Australia who hasn't even been on the phone with Benjamin Netanyahu yet? Well, I'm sure that the good people of Australia understand our need to fight terrorism and to fight this kind of cruelty. And I'm sure you, you were, because I was reading a bit about this, I'm sure that the people were horrified by the pictures that came out of Israel on October the 7th and understand our need to protect ourselves. Because, you know, I've, I've, I had a conversation with the family of Kfir, who is nine, he, he was nine months old when he was abducted from his home uh, by terrorists. But now his, his family discussed this with him and said, you should stop talk, talking about him like a nine month old because he's 10 months old already because he's been held captive for um, almost a month now. So I, I, I don't assume, I know the people of Australia understand what is it to fight an enemy that is abducting nine-month-old babies.